This video was produced by the State Historical Records Advisory Board with support from the National Historical Publications and Records Commission. For more information on the board and its activities, please visit the link in the description of this video. Preservation planning and collections care look to address the needs of your collection in both the short and long term. Preservation practices should be incorporated throughout the institution and should be considered in all aspects of decision making. Preventative measures focus on delaying deterioration and preventing problems before they arise. These strategies offer the most benefit to the collection as a whole. Let's discuss several basic but very important strategies that you should consider for the long-term preservation of your institution's collections. Where and how you store your collections is your first and best means of defense against deterioration. Assess your institution's shelving practices, cleaning routines, and holdings maintenance to identify areas for improvement. Use your informed judgment to evaluate your storage based on your collection's intrinsic value, condition, and anticipated use. Housing your collection in good archival quality enclosures provides physical support for the material, acts as a barrier from pollutants, dust, and light, and may serve as a chemical buffer against acidic degradation. Archival quality is not a regulated term, and acid-free only means a material is pH neutral at the time of manufacture. It says nothing about the material's long-term aging properties. When looking at archival housings, you'll want to make sure the material will not contribute to the degradation of the objects inside as it ages. Archival supply vendors put their materials through rigorous scientific testing and artificial aging to assess their suitability for long-term storage. Paper folders and boxes should be acid-free, meaning a neutral pH or buffered with a slight alkaline reserve, and lignin-free. Plastics should be made from archival polyester. In addition, plastics must be chemically stable, free of additives and plasticizers, and have no surface coatings. Archival materials are vulnerable to environmental factors. We can slow deterioration by managing temperature, relative humidity, light, and pollution exposure. Most cultural institutions strive to keep their collections at a stable temperature of around 70 degrees Fahrenheit or below, and around 50% relative humidity. It's important to establish an environmental monitoring system at your institution to attain accurate records, provide an overall picture of conditions, indicate if current equipment is producing the desired conditions, and ultimately help support requests to install equipment if necessary. One important key to remember is balancing the capability of your building systems with your ideal environment. You should focus on maintaining consistent temperature and humidity levels and reducing fluctuations due to season changes and other factors which can significantly impact the stability of your collections. Light is another factor to consider in preserving your collection materials. Light accelerates deterioration and can cause darkening and yellowing of paper. Most importantly, light damage accumulates over time and is irreversible. Consider displaying a high-quality reproduction of your document. If you must display the original, consider glass that filters UV rays, conservation quality matting, and choosing a display spot out of direct sunlight. Proper handling of collection material will extend its useful life and ensure continued accessibility of information. It's helpful to establish guidelines for patrons wishing to access collection material, such as prohibiting the use of pens, highlighters, and other marking devices around the collection material. Paper-based collection material should only be handled after a thorough hand washing. Treat loose documents gently and make sure the paper is fully supported when being moved or unfolded. If a document is torn, support both sides of the tear when moving to avoid furthering the damage. If pieces become detached during handling, you can keep them with the original object using a quick paper sleeve made out of archival quality paper, folded in half. Never use tape to repair any collection material. Bound materials should be removed from the shelf by grasping the middle of the spine, never from pulling at the top of the book's spine or head cap. If books are packed tightly on a shelf limiting your access, push the two surrounding books backwards on the shelf to expose the desired book's spine for removal. Books should be supported at an angle during staff and patron access, and not allowed to open flat unless the binding has been proven to accommodate that level of stress on the spine and joints without damage. 
Gloves should always be worn when handling photographs and negatives, as the natural oils on our hands and fingertips can cause permanent damage. Gloves are typically either white cotton that can be washed and reused, or single use, such as nitrile exam gloves. Any type of gloves will reduce your tactile sensation, so extra caution should be taken to prevent damage, especially if a photograph has cracked or flaking emulsion. Pests can wreak havoc, so it's very important for cultural institutions to have a strategy to prevent infestations from various insects and rodents. You should be highly proactive and attempt to prevent infestations and collection damage, minimizing the need for drastic chemical measures in response to a pest infestation. Some proactive measures include repairing or modifying the building envelope to discourage pest infiltration, dusting and regular cleaning of your storage area, restriction of food and beverages from collection spaces, and establishing a pest tracking and monitoring system. Natural and man-made disasters have the potential to significantly damage or destroy archival collections. While focus on day-to-day -day operations often takes precedence, it's extremely important for cultural institutions to be proactive and spend time on emergency planning and developing a practical disaster response plan. To implement these strategies, it's best to involve all staff, helping to build support and increase the understanding of the advantages of long-term preservation practices throughout your institution. Even small changes can offer long-term benefit to your collections. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check the other videos in this series.